we're going to be making a simple little horizontal scrolling infinite carousel. You can go back, you can go forward. If this interests you at all, stick around. Let's begin. All right, so we're going to start with a flex container. I'm going to call mine the images container like this. We're going to make some CSS in the head. We'll do style dot images container. And we're going to make this a flex box container display flex. We'll do flex direction row like that. We'll save and we'll make the width of it to fit the content. Now let's make some content for that. We're gonna have the individual little cards or the images. So I'm gonna say div.card like that. Let's go into the CSS dot card. We'll give it a width of 350. We'll give it a height of 200 pixels and we'll give it a background color of green for now. And we'll save and see what we get. Let's put a some text in there. So that's card one. Let's do this. Let's blow up that font size. We'll go 2.5 EM. Save. Let's center it. Text align. Center. There we go. Let's make a border for this. So we just say border. Let's say two pixels solid black. Now let's go into the inspect elements. Now, the width of this card is supposed to be 350. The height is supposed to be 200. When I go over the card, what do we get? We get 354 by 204. And so what's happening? Well, the, the border is not baking into the width and height. And that's not what I want. So I'm going to turn off that feature by saying box sizing. And we're going to say border box. We go back to our inspect element. And we see that the border is now taken into account with the width and height. We have 350 by 200. So that's one card. Just make, you know, let's say four cards. Three, four. Say two, three, four. Perfect. So those are our cards lined up. Let's wrap them in a viewport. So I'm going to say div.viewport like this. Put all of this stuff in the viewport. The viewport's like a window that you can see out of. So if you look at your window right now, if you're sitting in a room with a window, what can you see out of the window? Well, everything that's framed within the window, but everything's not framed within the window is just your wall or your curtains. That's the same idea behind a viewport. So we're going to trick the user into thinking there's one card on the page. So I'm going to go to dot viewport and say background color. Now I'll say red. I'll say width is going to be fit content. And just to show you what I'm doing, I'm going to say height of the height of a card was 200. I'll say 300 pixels. So this is our viewport here. It's wrapping all of the stuff. Watch what happens when I switch the width. Each width is 350. Let's just do 400 so it cuts a card off so you guys can see what I'm talking about. All right. So you see this is our viewport here. Watch what happens when I give it the overflow hidden attribute. It cuts off all of the other cards, and this creates the illusion that there's only one card, one image on the screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to craft or specify that the viewport width be the exact same width as a card and height, so 200, like that. And just like that, we have the illusion that there's only one card on the screen. But when I turn off this attribute, you can see that's what we're really working with. So I have the viewport all set up. I'll keep it off, uh, keep it on hidden for now. Let's, uh, let's center this guy. So now that all these guys are wrapped in the viewport, all I have to do is move the viewport around the screen. So I'm going to say position relative. Actually, we'll do absolute. And we'll say a top of 50%. We'll say a left of 50%. We'll save, and that's not quite the center. So we'll do a transform, translate, like this. We'll say negative 50%, negative 50%. And... There we got centered. All right, so we got our image centered here. We need a button or two buttons, a back and a previous. So I'm going to put the buttons here. Let's say button like this. And we'll say next, and we'll say your ID is equal to next, and we'll say this guy is previous, and your ID is equal to previous like this. Perfect. Now let's capture those guys. Stupid if a JavaScript. So we'll do script. Script like that. So when we execute the script, we'll capture the buttons and the viewport. 
So we'll do const, we'll say next is equal to document dot get element by ID. And the ID was next. Copy this line, paste. This guy's the previous button. There we go. Previous, and we'll get the images. So images equal document dot get element. No, it's a, it's a class. We'll do query selector. And we'll say dot images container. All right, so we have our buttons. We have our container. Let's start animating it. So we'll put an event listener on next first. So add event listener. We'll listen for a click with an empty arrow function. All right, so two things. When they click, we want a transition speed. So I'm going to say images dot style dot transition duration. I'll set it to 0 0.5 seconds. And then we transition the, uh, we translate or shift the viewport. And this will create the illusion that we're scrolling through the images. So style, images.style.transform is equal to, and we'll do a translate of negative, each width was 350. So we'll do 350 for now, 350 pixels. We'll save and we'll test the button. We click next and we get that translation. Now we keep clicking next and it's not doing anything. That's because we baked in a hard coded 350. We have to set that to a variable times 350, which we'll do in a second. Let's just do, uh, should we do the previous button? We'll finish the next button up first and then we'll do the previous. So let's do that uh, dynamic translation. We need a variable to keep track of which card we're on. So we're gonna say current card is equal to zero and we'll go by index number. So zero is index zero, but it's card one. Not that. There we go. So that's index zero, but it's card one. And so for our formula for the transform, instead of just negative 350, what we're going to say is we're going to need that back ticks. Do some string interpolation. All right. So we're going to say is negative, and then we're going to say a formula of the current card times 350 and pixels like this. Now we save and we click next once. Nothing's happening. What's going on? negative 350 times transform current card, current card. Uh, we're not increasing current card. So when they hit the current card, we have to actually increase that by one. There we go. Now when we click next, we get one, two, three, four. And notice, so that's what the viewport looks like. Notice we can scroll off screen, so let's change that. Once we hit the end of the, the image carousel, we're going to prevent them from clicking next. So I'm gonna say if, that current card is less than the length of our carousel, which is images.children.length, then you're permitted to run this code. Else you're just gonna return nothing, just like that. And that should prevent the user from over scrolling. So let's see, next, 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 and no. Ah, length minus one, because we're going by index, not by, um, what would you call it? You could say subjective length. So objective length is the index. Subjective length would be the actual one. Even though this is one, it looks like one, it's actually index zero. So now we click next, 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 click next, and nothing happens. So let's uh, copy this and create the previous button. So copy that, scroll down a bit for you guys. All right, change this to a previous ad event listener. And all we want to do is, as long as that current card is greater than zero, then you're allowed to go previous. So I'll do zero here, and we're not incrementing, we're decrementing. The, is that the word, decrementing? Whatever. And decrementing the, uh, the current card, and we have the same logic. So save, and we go next, 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 next. We can't go past. We go previous, 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 can't go past one. All right, so that's the basic gist of our image carousel. Now, what makes an image carousel an image carousel is that it wraps around, so you can keep on going next. And once you hit the the last card here, you automatically go to the, seamlessly, visually, to the first card. You keep wrapping around in like a merry-go-round style. So that's what we're going to do. So to accomplish that, we need to clone the first card and the last card. And I'll show you why. So let's clone those with um, we'll do const. So let's just say first card clone is equal to the images dot children and the first card and I think it's clone node. There we go. Pass it a true. Let's clone the last 
card. So last like this, last card clone. And it's just not going to be this. It's just going to be the length. So images.children.length minus one clone true. All right, so we've cloned them. We need, now need to insert them in our little uh, flex container. So what we're going to do is we'll do the first one first. So images dot, I think it's append, insert before, insert before. And we'll go with the new node, which is first card clone. And I want you to insert before the actual first card, the current first card. So images dot children and zero like that. And we need to append images dot append child to our new node would be the last card. So we save. And what do we get? We have one, one, which is the incorrect thing. Sorry. So the, the last card should be in the front and the first card should be at the, uh, the last. So first like this, there we go. So we have the last card at the front and then we have our actual first card here, two, three, four, and we have a clone of the first card at the back. Now, why do we do this? What we're going to do is once they scroll to card one right here, we're going to assume that they want to go to card two. So as soon as they hit this, this specific card one, we're going to, in a flash, so no duration, we're going to pop them right back to this one right here. So they're, they're going to think they went from this four to this one, when in reality they went to this four, to this one, and then to this one. So let's do, let's do this. Notice when I refresh my, my page right here, we're starting at card four. This is the first index of our, uh, of our carousel. We want to trick them and show them this card first. So we need to set up a transform before we get started. We're just going to do an images. Actually, I'll just copy this line. So there will be no duration to this. So I'm just going to say a duration of zero like this. And we're going to translate one card to the left. So 350. Now when I save, we start on this first quote unquote first card, even though this card right here is the first card. Let's do the scrolling. Let's say next, 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 next. One more time. We click next and nothing happens. That's because this current card, it's starting at zero, which is this card four. We need to start at the second card or the index one like this. So now we save, we click next, perfect, next, 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 perfect. So once we stop at this card, we need to transition all the way back to our first card. So let's do that. And we'll do that with, if that current card they're on is equal to the last card. So images.children.length minus one then we need to transition them all the way back to the first, the actual first, well, visually the first card. So no duration, or I'll, I'll keep the duration so you can see what we're doing. So we're just gonna translate all the way back to the first card like this. So there we go, there we go, we'll save, and watch what happens when I get to that, the last card of our carousel. So next, 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 and it goes back here. We don't want them to see this part, that part where it transitions. So what we're going to say is, we're just going to say zero. It's going to be instant. So next, 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 next. And they pop right back to one right there. Now, visually, that's going to look a bit jarring. Let me turn off the, uh, or turn on the overflow like this. So go next, 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 next. I notice it just pops back to one. We want to actually uh, let them see it scroll to a one. So we need to bake in a, uh, a, a, a time delay. So I'm going to say something right here. Let's do, do a time delay right here. We're going to do a set timeout. And we're going to run this code after a certain duration uh, pops off. And that duration will be, so that transition takes about 0.5 seconds, which is 500 milliseconds. We'll wait 600 milliseconds just so, that, so they have time to see it. We might need 700, but we'll see what this looks like. So now when I do next, 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 they see the one and we're popped back at one. If I go next, and so let me turn off the, uh, the overflow just to see what's going on. 
we go next, 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 and we pop back to this next here. I click next again, and nothing's happening because we didn't reset the current card. So after we pop right back around that one turn of the carousel, we need to set our current card back to one. There we go. So I click next, 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 and we're set back at one, next, next. And it looks a lot better with this overflow on. So next, 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 next. We just transitioned, you can see it, next, and we can keep going. So that's the logic behind infinite scrolling. Let's just apply that to the uh, the previous button because currently we can just go previous, 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 and we stop at the, the first card here. So let me turn off the overflow so we can see what we're working with. Previous, 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 nothing's happening. Let's copy and paste that logic. So what we're going to say is if current card is current card minus minus, here we go, this logic here. So all we're going to say is, if the current card is equal to zero, we're gonna, we're gonna transition to the, which card? It would be this card here, so children length minus one would be this, minus two would be, be the four. So we could use length or we can just use a calculation like this. Let's go images.children.length minus two, and we wrap that in brackets. Minus two times each width was 350 pixels, and that should do it. And we reset the current card to images.children.length minus, it should be two, let's see. All right format. Let's go back to our front. Let's go next, 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 next. Perfect. We can keep going next, 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 next. Let's go previous, previous, previous. And it popped me back to where is the card? Way over here. Now why there? I've accidentally deleted the, uh, the negative here, the minus. So it's shifting everything to the right instead of the left. So let's go previous, previous, Shifting back to four previous. There we go. Now we've infinite scrolling. Let's turn on the uh, the overflow, see what it looks like. Let's go next. Oh, clicked off the button. Next, next, next. So that's infinite scrolling that way. Previous, previous, previous. And infinite scrolling that way. So I've gone ahead and removed the color, those background colors in the border. I've just replaced all those numbers with these images from a website just to get a final product that looks like this. And so if this video helped you out at all, don't forget to give a like, subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. And the next video will, it might be the next video, but we're going to do an image carousel as well. But it'll be based off of a circle, a radius of a circle. We're going to be using some trigonometry in that, but it, it won't be that, that much, I promise. So I'll see you guys in that video.